a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Merry, merry, happy, happy, ho, ho. Welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show O, the last new show of 2020. The following two weeks on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, we will be doing a replay. So this is it. We're going to take 2020 out with a bang. This is Planetary Influences. And we're going to draw a quarter and crucify our astrologer tonight for this shitty year he just gave us. Oh, I'm sorry. Our our astrologer tonight, Rob Stewart from Inner Center uh, Hypnosis at innercenter.org, and the ever lovely Lori Powers Auto are here to talk about what is going on astrologically in the skies and what can we look forward to. Remember, this is a live call in show. And so you can call in and be part of the conversation, ask questions. And your favorite Christmas carol, whatever, at 202-570-7057. That's 202-570-7057. So, Miss Lori, how are you today? I'm doing okay, Dr. Kevin. How are you? Kevin? Oh, I guess, do we lose him? Uh, okay, I'm like, what happened? <laughs> Yeah. Oh gosh. That's funny. That's funny. Well, yeah. So how are you doing, Lori? The holidays. I'm back. I don't know what happened. It must be that new technology. Miss Lori, how are you? I'm okay, Dr. Kevin. How are you? Uh, okay. You got to tell, you got to, you got to tell me the joke. What's the joke? You, like you hanging up on us. I didn't like, hang up. I don't know. I don't know what happened. What was the like, last thing you heard me say? Uh, asked me how I was. Oh, okay. And then so you disappeared. Oh, I don't. I, I I honestly don't know what happened. So it's just another 2020 thing. How are you, Miss Lori? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm doing all right. How's, how's Dr. Kevin doing today? <laughs> well, let me see. I oh. logged in just under five hours of shoveling today, <clears throat> meetings and clients. So I am going to happily sit back and listen to our wonderful astrologer tell us how in just a few days, Magic is going to happen, and everything will be fabulous and right and perfect with the world again. Because I know that's what he's going to say. I know that's what he's uh, going to say if he wants to live. Uh. <laughs> so, I'm so too old for five question. hours of shoveling, huh? Go ahead. I guess the question is, how is Rob? <laughs> Right. Yeah, no, I'm I'm doing well. Thanks. Yeah, I today reminded me of uh, the uh, very grateful for the invention of the snowblower. A um, lot yeah. of snow here in the seacoast area of uh, New Hampshire, and yeah, boy, we got over a foot of snow, and uh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, you know, Lori, do you know how much we got up here? We got close to I eighteen have- inches, didn't we? Yeah, that's what that's what we're figuring, eighteen inches. Yeah. You see, that wonderful snow blower is so fabulous when you can start it up and it works in the morning. When it doesn't, not on my wish list. Yep. Yeah, I, I was snow blowing for five hours. I was shoveling because the snow blower decided it was a good time to take an early day off for the holidays. So anyway. Oh, lazy snowboard. Uh, what can I say? You know, 
it's a good it's a good thing I'm made of tough stuff. So moving right along from that, we are now I am now walking in a winter winter wonderland literally, and I am looking forward. So because this is going to be the last show of the year, because I did opt to do a replay for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, since I am tied up for both. Tonight, as our last show, besides hearing all the stuff going on in astrology, I would like you both to think some of some kinds of words of hope or inspiration or motivation or something to help people transition from 2020 to 2021. You can wait till the end of the show, so I'll give you time to think about it. And that being said, you have been warned. Mr. Rob, what are these skies doing to us now besides snowing? What's going on with these planets? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, just, uh, you know, the way, um, you know, in astrology, they – we speak of the, you know, the planets not sort of imprinting effects on the earth. They're just more of a markers of the energies that are occurring in general. So there's not a, um, you know, the planets are doing this and causing things to, uh, to us to move through challenges or transformation here. You know, it's more of just a um, reading the tea leaves sort of thing of the general energies uh, that are existing. But so, Right now, uh, so the sun is entering Capricorn on December 21st, and December 21st is a pretty important date here for the, uh, well, for the next 20 years, but we'll, we'll get into that. Um, but uh, so the sun's entering Capricorn, and the sun represents what we do to feel sane in our life. And of course, in our, the, the moment of our birth, our sun is in a certain zodiac sign, and, and we're all familiar with that, our sun sign. But as, it, as the sun moves through the sky, we get to uh, sort of taste uh, the energies of those, uh, the, the, yeah. the signs that the sun is moving through. So it's entering Capricorn December 21st. And, you know, the sun represents sort of the organizational structure in which we see the world. It's sort of the lens in which we see the world in some sense. And Capricorn's about being mature. It's about being realistic. Uh, There's sort of a more serious energy with Capricorn. Um, And there's a motivation to build, you know, build structure, maintain structure, uh, bring more discipline into our lives. And being in charge in our own life and, uh, and sometimes in the lives of others, you know, with Capricorn, there's sort of a leadership uh, um, effect with Capricorn. Um, and so, you know, Capricorn brings rules, brings regulations. You know, maybe this, this is a time of year where everybody's sort of getting down into the, the nitty gritties, you know, uh, at times maybe a, a bit repressive. <laughs> you know, it's funny because Capricorn, you know, talk about this seasonal moods and in Christmas time always brings with it, uh, you know, a mix of emotions. Um, but with Capricorn, there can be this, uh, uh, slowing down and sort of a, uh, even controlling energies in, in some ways and in, in different, different ways of it, um, manifesting, but Capricorn's about accepting responsibility, reflecting up upon ourselves and looking at what needs to be changed in our lives. And uh, so, you know, these are, these are the energies, uh, the general uh, energies of Sun and Capricorn over the next 30 days. Um, it's about integrating our individual sense of, of, our own, of our purpose and our inner authority and bringing that into the context of the greater society. So that's sort of a structural period of the year, time of the year, in which we're building uh, building and maintaining structures in our life and looking long-term uh, to achieve goals. And, um, and also Mercury's entering Capricorn on December 20th. So, uh, and Mercury is, is communication. It's uh, rules, uh, thinking, thought, input, output, things like that. And so, you know, the communication over the next, uh, let's see, next couple of weeks, 
Uh, Mercury will be in Capricorn until January 8th, but communication takes sort of a more direct energy. Uh, and, you know, it's it really, it's a time where we can really be more practical in our thinking, uh, sort of control our own wandering thoughts, I guess you could say. Um, but it's time of being mature and practical and uh, responsible in our thinking and, and doing here over the next month. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you have any questions, obviously chime in and, um, uh, but you know, the big thing, uh, in the forecast over the next 30 days is the great conjunction, which I'm sure many of you guys have heard of that's occurring on December 21st. And the great conjunction is, uh, when Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct in the same location in the sky. And this occurs once every 20 years. And these are two visible planets. So this is something that some call it the Bethlehem star or, you know, these two visible planets that line up and sort of, uh, it can be, it's visible. And the great conjunction, this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, it begins a new cycle. Uh, it's every 20 years. And historical astrologers look at this as sort of a indication of the changing times. Uh, there's a new cycle of maturity, new cycle of balance and integrity that occurs every 20 years. It has a certain flavor. And so if you look at the individual planets, Jupiter is about expansion, uh, generosity, optimism, and Saturn's a bit more about responsibility and setting limits, uh, real world concerns, boundaries, and maturity. And so there's these two sort of, in some ways, different energies with Jupiter being limitless and Saturn being uh, restrictive and, and constrictive at times. And, uh, and so basically when these two planets come together, it starts this new cycle of expansion and contraction, uh, testing new areas of expansion, seeing if they hold. Um, um, and it's a beginning of a brand new cycle. It's a great time for intentions, for setting intentions for, uh, for the year ahead, for the 20 years ahead, you know, just basically the intentions that you choose to bring into your life. Um, that really touch all areas of life, um, um, financial, relationship, uh, home, family, everything in those ways of really there's a new beginning here uh, with these two planets coming together. And Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, was, I, I, I want to wait till you finish describing the Grand Conjunction. Then I want to talk about it, but I want to make sure you finish describing it first. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, you know, the thing with these slow-moving planets is that it takes time for them to do their work in, in our life and the life, the collective life. Uh, Faster-moving planets have a faster effect with things that happen and things like that. So uh, the Great Conjunction, this is a beginning of a new cycle for the next 20 years. We'll get into this, some really interesting things here, but a brand, really a brand new beginning. And my goodness, uh, brand new things ahead, uh, especially in the areas of technology, communication, uh, financial systems. It's just, there's, uh, we'll get into this, but it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, but it's a slow moving thing. It's not going to be waking up on the 21st uh, and seeing a brand new world. It's going to take time for these changes to occur. Uh, but every great conjunction, uh, there are major societal changes. Um, and the interesting thing is that over the past 200 years, the great conjunction has occurred in earth science uh, for the past 200 years. So, and this is, uh, and we'll get into this, this is sort of the shift into air science. This conjunction will be in Aquarius. And, uh, and this is a big deal when, when planets shift, when a cycle shifts into a new sign, it's a different, there's a new beginning. It's a very interesting shift. And, um, you know, I, I do want to say that towards the end of these 200-year cycles, which is uh, 
we're in a new cycle entering an, an air sign, but towards the end of these 200 years, there's a taste, sort of a, um, a sneak peek, because there is a conjunction in the air sign just before it ends. And that occurred in 1980, 1981. We had a, grand con a great conjunction in the sign of Libra back in 1981. And for the next 20 years, there was this, the energies of the, the um, element of the air was, was a big part of the societal changes. And that was just as uh, the computers, personal computers were lifting off, becoming more, you know, uh, in daily lives and in everybody's individual lives, uh, and also the rise in the formulation of the Internet. And this, there was all this sort of new airy energy, uh, you know, quick shifts, intelligence, communication, uh, mental activity, philosophical changes. Um, and, you know, if you look at the period of time from the 1980s and the 1990s, there was these huge, huge societal shifts to computerized everything. And that's just a sneak peek of what we're going to be seeing these next 20 years. I mean, we're talking some really futuristic shifts over these next 20 years. And, you know, I, I was looking at a timeline of computers taking off in the 1980s. And in 1981, that was when IBM created its first personal computer. Um, so there's going to be big shifts in 2021, you know, right out of the gate. Uh, but it's going to continue over those next 20 years. Um, there's a lot to talk about here. Um, but if you got, if you have to want to chime in, uh, please do. Um, well, uh, you know, first of all, Lori, do you have any questions so far about everything that we've talked about? Oh. And we're going to find out that answer when we return here on the Dr. Kevin Show after our this break. We want to give Lori a little time to think about her answer. That's why we decided to have the break, just so you guys know. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4pm Pacific Time, 7pm Eastern Time every Thursday and together we can discover what's really going on. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 Food Bank Strong. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show. Remember, this is a live call-in show, so you can call in at 202-570-7057. That's 202 502 7057. 
We are doing our last edition of Planetary Influences in 2020. We're going to see what other surprises those planets have. As Rob pointed out in the first segment, they just are there and they influence things. These are just a guide to the energies. They're not here to make your decisions, tell you what to do, or give you excuses. Don't use astrology as your excuse. That being said, we're going to turn this back to... Miss Lori, did you have any questions about the sun in Capricorn or the beginning of this grand, grand conjunction or great conjunction? It's the great oh. conjunction. It's a great conjunction. Great. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any questions. I am just, I've been waiting all month for this, this show tonight. So I'm very excited to hear what Rob has to say. So. Continue. Uh, I want to hear all. Uh, I want to hear all about the great conjunction, and then we'll 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 just take it from there. Because I don't want to ask a question that you were going to answer anyway. So go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, like I was saying, uh, these great conjunctions that occur every twenty years, and for the past two hundred years, they were in Earth signs. But we got a taste of uh, an air sign great conjunction back in the nineteen eighties, and that's basically a sneak peek, I guess you'd say for where we are now. Uh, this is the first uh, uh, air sign for the next 200 years where there will be consistently every 20 years in air signs. And so this is a big shift. And, uh, you know, as we we're talking about in the 1980s, uh, you know, even looking at the music world uh, from the 1970s to the 1980s, there was this big shift into, you know, synthesized electronic um, uh, instruments and music types and genres. Uh, there is, you know, the sort of futuristic, airy uh, energy that was really uh, in a lot of areas of society. I guess we could probably think about some of those and extrapolate. Uh, um, so that was in the sign of Libra. And, you know, the sign of Aries, uh, excuse me, the element of air brings with it intellect, uh, philosophy, communication, networking. And, uh, you know, there's tre- there was these tremendous advancements in technology and computers. Um, you know, the, the 90s, that's when we saw Microsoft launch Windows, 95 anyways, Amazon, Yahoo, all these huge companies formulated in these 90s or maybe, maybe even before, but that's when they launched was in the 90s, um, you know, Internet Explorer, then all these technologies like Java that allowed animations on websites. So there's all this technological breakthrough that really created the world uh, that we live in today. Um, um, and so we can really expect, I mean, back in the 70s, gosh, you probably couldn't even imagine what was going to happen in the 90s, you know? And that's the same thing now where over these next 20 years, there's going to be tremendous changes, innovation and um, ingenuity in a big way. Um, This, this Saturn Jupiter conjunction that's occurring on December 21st is in Aquarius and Aquarius is about being innovative. It's technology. Uh, um, It's, Aquarius is different. It's, it's motivated by pushing the envelope. It represents revolution, rebellion, and counterculture. There's sort of this countercultural motivation with Aquarius. It's, it's um, breaking away from the pack sort of thing. And, um, you know, the bottom line is Aquarius is just very technolo- technology-focused, networks, um, And uh, so, you know, we can really expect some big shifts in technology, but not only that, in all sort of areas of, of, of life, you know, one of these things in the news, I've followed sports a little bit and um, there is uh, recently, there was this uh, big boxing match between um, that was announced between Floyd Mayweather, the the greatest boxer arguably that ever fought in the ring. uh, A, against a YouTube star, some young guy that's, that hasn't won a fight in his life, but he has millions and millions of viewers on YouTube. 
and uh, they're going to have a boxing match. And this is just, a, this is a totally Aquarian type of thing where there's just two different people from two different worlds, you know, an insider like Floyd May, Mayweather in the, in the fighting world, you know, he's at the top of the top. He's unbeaten. Uh, I don't, he's like 50 and 0 or something. And then this outsider to the sports world anyways, uh, who's going to be boxing him, uh, who's never won a fight in his life. And he's only fought once or twice or something like that. So this is a totally Aquarian. This is a taste of what's ahead. You know, the commonality here is, you know, it's like these two worlds, um, meeting one another, the YouTube world versus this, the boxing world meeting, uh, you know, this is a huge sort of Aquarian type of energy. And I think, a a, um, a taste of these types of mixing energies that are, that are occurring. Um, and so, you know, like I said, uh, uh, there, this is, there is sort of a new moon energy with this great conjunction occurring on December 21st. These two planets are conjoining at zero degrees Aquarius. Um, so there's this new beginning. And so I think it's a time for all of us to really think about what it is that we want to liberate ourselves from. Aquarius is about liberation. It's about breaking away from old conditioning in our life, um, whether that's family or societal or whatever it is. But it's about being being different, being free, uh, shedding those old patterns. Um, and, you know, another thing about these cycles is that these two planets are, again, conjoining at zero degrees Aquarius. And Jupiter's a faster moving planet. So Jupiter's going to be moving ahead and there's going to be expansion and, and growth and optimism in a lot of different ways. And you can look in your chart Wherever Aquarius is in your chart, this is where there's going to be some new innovations occurring. Um, but then Saturn's a slower moving planet, and it's going to be following Jupiter. And so there's going to be these, these sort of Jupiter will be expanding things, and then Saturn might bring in more regulation or more restriction or more limit. You know, there might be new regulations um, that are place, in place related to technology or related to um, whatever it is, you know, maybe there's, you know, w one of the themes I see is sort of a, uh, an increase in censorship or things like that. So there could be these sort of in, uh, increased restrictions, um, that follow these expansive, uh, expansions. Um, and the other, you know, really important thing here over the next year is that, uh, you know, the rulers, the co-rulers of Aquarius are Saturn and Uranus. And these two planets will be squaring each other for most of 2021. Uranus is in Taurus. Um, and so we can expect some really, some disruptions, you know, some, uh, you know, I'm not a financial advisor and I've been saying this for some time that the, the markets could be unstable. Um, they've, they haven't been, uh, as far as I know. Um, I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, next year, with the square between Saturn and Uranus and, and Taurus, there could be unpredictability, uh, perhaps in the markets, changes even in currencies, the monetary system. You know, we've seen the rise of Bitcoin, um, electronic money, new systems. You know, the Federal Reserve uh, came out a, a month ago saying, you know, this is a new system this is a new economy this is and we talked about this in previous shows but there's likely a tremendous change in the way that trade is done in monetary systems and supply chains you know also there's all these different areas where there's going to be change and you know while aquarius you know it's very innovative it's very futuristic it's progressive, um, and these are wonderful things. But also Aquarius, just like any sign, has uh, shadow sides, has, you know, the other edge of the sword. And with Aquarius, there's, there's great potential for disconnection, or ex disassociation, um, uh, feeling left out or feeling um, 
uh, uh, traumatized, traumatized through too much objectivity. You know, one analogy for this is that with the rise of technology, we've sort of disassociated ourselves. I know in my own life, I see this from, you know, the physical world, you know, my day to day life, you know, I find myself on the computer more and more. And uh, especially obviously this year. So there's sort of a disassociative energy with Aquarius and um, Aquarius can be the mind ruling the heart and s instead of it the other way around, you know, so there can be almost too much mental energy, you know, maybe, um, you know, things like censorship, things like that could really have to be mindful about those things in these, in these energies. Um, and um, so, Right. So these are types, these are the types of things, you know, uh, another thing I, I had written down here was, um, you know, with uh, the mind over the heart, you know, things and uh, things like even spiritual things, you know, psychic phenomenon, metaphysical areas, you know, perhaps at some point those are ruled incorrect or not, um, uh, not proven in the scientific world and therefore untrue and and then being cast aside or uh, labeled a certain way i mean these are the types of things to be aware of and to be mindful of um you know with both you know the positives uh, over these next 20 years and the and the shadow sides of aquarius um and there's also you know another one of the things to be mindful of is you know uh, reaching for technology instead of our intuition. You know, um, a lot of things, uh, themes like that uh, can certainly be at play. So that's all I had to say about the Great Conjunction. But, you know, this, boy, there's a lot to talk about. So, um, yeah, what do, you guys, what do you guys think about all this? Well, so I've got a couple of comments, and then I will ask you with glory. So the first, or my first comment or question is, Aquarius is also a fixed sign. Yeah. And so having this grand, con, grand conjunct, great conjunction in a fixed sign setting up the next 20 years, not only, not only an air sign, but a fixed sign, is it going to say that um, we are going to, I mean, is there going to be playouts in structure that we will see that is going to like are we going to get stuck in ways with it being in a fixed sign and maybe be less right. flexible? Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. I and I um you know, with all these signs have, have positive aspects and, and uh, less positive aspects, and and I think that is certainly one of those things to be aware of. Of, of, um, uh, yeah, fixed position on what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, what's what's in, what's out. You know, sort of there can be some fixed um, stances on that, um, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's it's like I mean to me, fixed can end up being like stubborn. There's definitely there's a definitely a stubbornness more to fix signs in a way than the cardinals or the mutables, and you know because they kind of dig in and that's the way that that's the way things are. So part of what we may be looking here is that in all of this great expansion and involvement, that ways that don't fit in to the fixed mindset of of the powers that be, so to speak, in the movement are going to find that they're having a hard time finding a place that in some ways there'll be expansion, but there may be a resistance to innovation of kind. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I, that makes a lot of sense. I, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to put that out yeah. there. Um, the other thing is that, um, so, you said an area of your life. So like Aquarius is in my third house. 
I don't have anything in it. It's kind of just sitting there taking up some house space going, okay, yeah, I'm here. I'm here in your third house. So somebody like me who has a third house, when this happens, what areas of my life might be best, what might be most impacted? Yeah, well, no, it's a great question. And I encourage everyone to look at their chart um, to see where this, this new beginning um, of innovation is occurring. And so uh, the, the third house, Dr. Kevin, is about perception. It's about education. It's about teaching and writing, um, communication. Um, and uh, so, you know, third house is about gathering data, um, gathering new information, asking questions and getting answers, uh, which I know you're, uh, is one close to your heart, you know. So there's, there's um, you know, some new innovations in that area that, um, uh, for you, you know, I, I, obviously, you know, you do client work. I could see new changes in networking and teaching and, uh, communicating, writing, publishing in those areas. Um, third house is also neighbors, uh, siblings, um, um, reaching out, connecting with others through with information in new innovative ways would be one way to, to see all this. So it's interesting because, you know, in 2020, I, I managed to get four new books released and I was going to do four more, do more new books in 2021, but I've started getting some creative ideas of different ways I want to put things out. So now I've gone from four to six and I might end up at eight. And so as you're yeah. saying that, that comes to me because it's writing, it's communication, it's creating stuff that's more kinesthetic or interactive is in my thought process. So, got one more question for you, but we got our music coming. I will ask you when we get back. We'll see what kind of question Flory has, and then we'll see what's going on with everything after the 21st. Right here on the Dr. Kevin Show. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. 911, what is your emergency? My kid shot himself. All right, where's the wounds? 911, what is your emergency? Please, my son shot his brother. 911, what is your emergency? 911, please state your emergency. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. Learn how to make your home safer at endfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and End Family Fire. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show. On the last Dr. New Dr. Kevin Show, uh, there will be a replay for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. The last planetary influences of 2020. Here with Reverend Lori Howard Otto and Rob Stewart from innercenter.org. Our planetary influences ringmaster. He stands upon the planet Earth and he conducts the planet. I can see him now. Uh, so, Mr. Ringmaster. Um, yeah. So the other thing that occurred to you about what you said is COVID 
actually was the foreshadowing of this big boost in technology. People had to learn how to work from home. People had to learn how to do things differently. I think of how it's affected things like, you know, New Year's Day, I'm actually thinking of privately renting the theater because they'll do that and have only people in my pod come watch the new Wonder Woman that are interested. It's a different way of doing things. How do we still keep it going? So I look at COVID as almost like the setup, the, the foreshadowing of this great conjunction. Does that make sense? Does that feel right to you? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it does. And, um, you know, I, I think a lot of these themes, uh, the good and the bad um, of, uh, you know, not talking about the virus, of, uh, but the, just the effects on society, you know, the more, I guess there's more screen time, there's more connecting via the, um, the internet, uh, Zoom meetings and things like that. And, you know, with it, there's new opportunities and new innovation, new ways of trade, but there's also, um, you know, I think, I don't know the right word for it, but, you know, disconnection, disassociation, um, uh, more uh, focus on the mind rather than physical interaction. And I, I think these do, like you said, I think this, you know, it's, a, it's sort of, uh, I think it's a good foreshadowing of some of the uh, the, uh, the questions and um, the paths ahead, you know, um, both innovative and disassociative, I guess, you know, these challenges um, and opportunities. So, Miss Lori, any thoughts, comments, or questions before Rob moves on to the rest of our time in Capricorn? Um, no. Because Rob has answered all my questions. You asked some of them. He answered some of them right off. And so, yeah, I'm good. Let's let's find out okay. what else is happening. Yes, because there are still yeah. a few other things happening. So go ahead before we run out of time, Rob. Yeah, Rob, all right. And hey, just magic on. <laughs> Just one other thing, um, and Lori, I, you know, we had talked some time ago. I have your chart, and your this conjunction is occurring in your second house, as I understand it, um, and that is um, so. There's going to be new innovation with regards to um, what you value in life, um, and you're uh, turning your skills into money and uh, using your time and energy in the ways that align for you and your life. So there's new innovation, new um, uh, boy, like, uh, refound self reliance and, um, ways of earning money. So that's, it's a, it's, it's a good place for this new beginning, um, there in the yeah. second house. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. Nice. I can't wait my, my, you know, until we talk on the 29th. That'll, whew. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, so, yeah. And so, um, yeah, and everybody can look at their own chart um, and, and see where Aquarius falls and to see where these new beginnings are. Um, and if you don't know where Aquarius falls in your chart and you go to today's posting on My Dr. Kevin or the Dr. Kevin Radio Show on Facebook, you will see a wonderful end of the year offer Rob is made about astrology charts and you could get him to let you know. Where is this going to be affecting you? And then you have a chart as you listen monthly to Rob, and you can apply that information so you can get more out of it. So, Rob, continue. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much for that. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun to work with people one-on-one um, -on -one with this. It's, you know, it's an exciting time for sure. So, um, yeah, so moving on, uh, you know, we have a full moon at the end of this month on December 30th. It's in the sign of cancer. Uh, full moons are a time of release and fruition. And, um, and so this is, this is a real energy of uh, welcoming release, uh, connecting with our emotions. And, uh, you know, it's the end of the year. 2020 is ending. And uh, 2021 is ahead. And uh, the good news is 2020 is just about in the books. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, w with the full moon, the sun and the moon are opposite one another. So it's sometimes 
It's a time where our needs and our wants are at odds in some way. Um, and there's heightened emotions during a full moon, um, especially in the sign of cancer. Um, the full moon's making a, a sextile to Uranus. And so there might be some uh, uh, stimulating encounters or exciting events, uh, maybe more personal freedom. You know, there's some... Um, spontaneity here with this full moon at the end of at the end of the year here um and then looking ahead again to into january uh mars enters taurus mars has been in the sign of aries for the past six months which has been mar i mean it, it's very rare uh that mars is in a sign for that long of a period of time so it's been in aries um mars is about our assertion, how we exert ourselves and take action in our life. And in the sign of Aries, it's pretty, it's pretty darn fiery. And we've seen a lot of that this past uh, six months. It was retrograde for, for a good portion of that too, uh, which slowed things down. But the Mars is entering the sign of Taurus on January 6th, and it will be there until early, early March. And uh, Taurus is about slowing down. It's, it's a time to um, enjoy the senses, uh, you know, focusing on what matters in your life. Uh, rela great time for relaxation um, when you can uh, do that. And uh, sort of indulging in the finer things in life. You know, one of the tendencies for Mars and Taurus is overspending at times. So that's something to be aware of over the next uh, couple of months. Um, and also be aware that sometimes we can confuse material comforts with emotional comforts with Mars and Taurus also. So, um, so yeah, you know, Mars and Taurus, it's, it, it's generally a time for enjoyment, um, not rushing around. It's time for leisure and pleasure. Um, but Taurus, Taurus is also persistent, um, can be stubborn, you know, and determined. So it's a good time reconnecting with the body, good time for yoga, good time for whatever practices uh, you have in your life. So on, uh, and then on January 8th, Mercury enters uh, Aquarius uh, for the next, uh, boy, how long is it in Aquarius? Until March 15th. So a couple months in Aquarius. So there's a lot of Aquarian energy. You know, these energies we've been talking about for most of the show a uh, lot of communication, innovation, um, a lot of, you know, maybe some rebelliousness uh, over the airwaves, things like that. Uh, so a lot of this um, innovative, unique, progressive um, uh, energies in the air. So that's really, that's really all I had for uh, the general energies here. Um, yeah. What, okay. What, so, so mm -hmm. there is, so first of all, um, you know, we're having the final Congress certification of the electoral vote of the electoral college vote, which could be the, the, the dying breath attempt to try to have the president steal the election for himself. He's tried every manner of legal and even recommended illegal things to make it happen um, so he doesn't have to leave office. But right around this time that Mars goes into Taurus, that issue gets resolved. The Congress finalizes the Electoral College vote, and then 14 days later, Biden is sworn into office. So I think it's interesting that astrologically what we have going on is I, I think that we'll probably see that last gasp of recommended violence and blowback and stuff like this. But the same around the same time, Mercury is is shifting into the kind of conversation that I suspect this country is going to be shifting into as we're welcoming a new approach to the pandemic that we're starting to see the pros and cons of this vaccine, that all of these things are going on. And so on a, on a national global schedule, so to speak, 
the astrology is pretty much really lining up to to support or enhance or whatever um, some of these notable dates that are coming. And I just want to kind of point that out. Um, now, I also asked for either uh, some kind of message or thought or thing that you would like to share with our listeners as we are, again, this is our last live show in 2020 as we're closing out. Lori has been doing two shows a month with me for all of 2020. Um, our second Thursday of the month, Inspirational Motivational Thursdays, which is now also going to be adding in on a regular basis poetry from myself and others. We invite people to submit their poetry if they'd like to have it read on air or to call in and share it with us as a way to inspire and motivate. And then obviously, Lori's been here with Planetary Influences. And then Rob, of course, is here every month with Planetary Influences. I want to thank you both for the support in 2020 on the Dr. Kevin show and give you this opportunity to give a closing message in 2020 to our listeners. Lori, let's start with you. Well, thank you, Dr. Kevin. And thank you for letting me be a part of this journey this year with you twice a month. I really have enjoyed it and I look forward to continuing. Um, I don't know if I'm, you know, not a very talkative person, as some people might have noticed. <laughs> um, I don't know. So I don't know if I have any great inspiring wisdoms to say. But one thing that's been coming to me a lot through all of this year and, and especially recently is that out of the bad can come a lot of good. And we have to choose which we focus on, the bad or the good. And I choose to to focus on the good, the positive, the wonderful things that I've seen come out of this year, people growing, people stepping back into their own power, people realizing that how they were living their life was not true to themselves, and now they're walking a different path. I've seen families get closer. I've seen people get their health back. I, I've seen families lose loved ones and become stronger despite it. And I know that some people are going, oh, my God, you know, but it it is true. I, I've personally happened to me this year, so I can say you have to choose, and I hope everybody chooses to focus on the positive. You know, as Mr. Rogers says, look for the heroes, look for the helpers, and you'll find yourself there among them. Very good. Rob, what would you like to share? Yeah, boy, um, that's right. I was just thinking, you know, I think it was a year ago that uh, I joined the the, um, uh, the show for the first time. And, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been, boy, what a year to start um, here with you on the show. Um, uh, it's been quite a year, obviously. And, um, you know, the I guess the thing that I, I would want to share is for everyone to um, – uh, you know, it's it's a time for us all to re- reconnect with uh, our own heart. I, I think the 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 times ahead, there's going to be um, it, it's can be easy to be lost in the mind. I think that's a very human um, thing that we all do. Um, uh, certainly, it is for me, and I think that it's very um, important. You know, this year has taught us a lot about challenge and difficulty and, and moving through it. You know, like a, a smooth rock has to go through a tumbler, you know. And, um, and I wish we, I could say we're out of that tumbler um, astrologically. Um, but I think it's a really important thing for all of us to reconnect with our heart, our intuition, our inner knowing, and to really... Um, Connect with that first. I think that's what's important. I think that's always what's important. And to follow each and our own intuition, our knowing from a heart-based center, I think that's, uh, that's always the way. And I, I think through doing that, people have moved through this um, good and the bad and all the rest. Um, but I'm sure, you know, life always 
uh, is a mixed bag, and this year really showed that. Um, um, so, yeah, I guess my message is to trust your intuition, trust your heart, and um, to look to a, a new year, new beginning, um, and I, I look forward to that. So I'd like to say, first of all, again, thank you, Rob, and thank you, Lori, for sharing this time with me. And I want to thank my listeners. You know, I'm, I always try to remember exactly when it was that I started my first Dr. Kevin show. And I think I've tracked it back about 15 years now of being on different radio stations, being on live radio stations, being on internet radio, being on podcasts. But for 15 years, I've had the honor of being able to reach out to people and to hopefully motivate, inspire, and to help them move forward in their spiritual journey. And I look forward to you joining us on 2021 to do more of the same. Also, pay attention to the Web of Light Expo Speaker Series. January 17th is the first one. We're doing six next year to introduce you to some of the best speakers, teachers, and healers that we have. Uh, Lori is going to be speaking in March, um, and uh, we just have some exciting things going. If you want more information, you can call, you can email me at Dr. Kevin D R K V I N at weboflight.com. That's W E B O F L I G H T dot com. 